Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Baritone Bartender. I'm Rod Guilfrey. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I'm not going to be making a cocktail. I'm going to investigate how to make clear ice cubes. This is kind of important to me because I tend to have, I've never done this before. Uh, it's going to be new for me as well. Uh, what I usually use, I think I'm making an old-fashioned with a big ice cube, and if you watch the old-fashioned uh, episode, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, I usually use these, I've got these silicone molds. They do four each, four ice cubes each. These are two inch or two and a quarter inch ice cubes. They're big, and they go inside of a, an extra large rocks glass. And this is what they look like. So they're very cloudy. And see if I, see so you can see how much air or something is trapped in there. I don't think that it's impurities in the water because I use um, filtered water. I have a reverse osmosis system that gets the water super clean. So I don't think that's it. So it could be air, I'm not sure, but we're gonna, we're gonna look into what to do about it. and I decided to buy this device. This is called True Cubes. It advertises ice so clear it disappears. And you can see in that glass of whiskey or whatever it is, it, yeah, you can't even see the ice below the liquid line. This is what comes inside of it. You've got your, this, this thing here. You've got an instruction manual, which is very important, I learned. Read the instructions. And then inside, it's going to look wet because I accidentally uh, filmed this whole thing in portrait mode and now I'm doing it over again and I already got it wet. And there are three parts to this device. It's pretty simple. There's the actual ice cube mold, uh, silicone ice cube mold. You see it makes four cubes. There's this compartment that goes underneath it. This goes inside of it thusly. And then this whole thing goes into this. It's an insulated box. It's styrofoam inside like an ice chest, okay? And this goes in here. The way it makes clear ice is with the principle of top-down freezing. Now, apparently, I haven't noticed this myself, but if you go walk across a frozen pond or lake, uh, you'll see that the ice on top is completely clear. When I think about when I've done that, yeah, I, I can remember it was, it was clear. So that's kind of interesting because lake water's not that clean. Um, and these ice cubes I've made in, in, uh, that I just showed you are made with reverse osmosis water, which is very, very clean. So what's going on here? Okay, so this top-down freezing, allegedly, the way it works is when the water freezes from the top down, it pushes all the impurities into this lower chamber where they get stuck. And apparently, uh, the way this works is this little ice chest that's around it keeps the cold off of all of the water underneath so that the only source of cold is on the top. And then makes it top down freezing. So it freezes the top and then gradually lower and lower and lower. What's supposed to happen is when we take this out, the water inside is supposed to be slushy and the, then the, the um, water in here have, will be, have been frozen into clear ice cubes. Okay, now they recommend using tap water. I think this re uh, presents an interesting challenge for us because we can actually test and see if the impurities are reduced in the actual ice. For that, I'm gonna use my handy dandy total dissolved solids meter. So this is a total dissolved solids meter, total dissolved solids and what it does is it measures the amount of dissolved solids that can be minerals gases um, any kind of heavy metals whatever happens to be in the water and expresses it in terms of parts per million now i'm going to do this in a way that's relatively scientific i'm going to first measure the total dissolved solids of our tap water 
I'm going to measure the total dissolved solids of our reverse osmosis water for comparison. Then, after the ice is made, I'm going to measure the TDS of the wastewater, the slushy part that's in the lower compartment, see if it's a higher concentration than the tap water. Then, hopefully we'll have clear ice cubes, but then we're going to let the ice melt and check the TDS of the ice cubes and see if it has been reduced from the tap water. So, here we go. Okay, it says zero, zero, zero. Now I'm gonna put it in the tap water and see what it reads. Oh, 153, let me see. Okay, we'll settled at 153. One, five, three. Okay, reverse osmosis water. And that's gonna be 10. Swish it around a little bit. 10, that's quite a reduction. From 153 down to 10, that's more than a 90% reduction. That's pretty good. No wonder I like that water. So I'm writing this on here, reverse osmosis, 10. Okay, so after we, after we freeze the ice and, uh, and take it out 18 to 22 hours from now, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this up, fill this up with tap water. There's a little fill line right there about an eighth of an inch from the top of that chamber. So you can see that it is filled and I'm gonna put it into my freezer. I have a thermometer in here to see how cold it is and it is zero degrees Fahrenheit. That's a cold freezer. Okay guys, going over here to the freezer. There we go. And what time is it? 8.17. So 18 hours will be, yeah, 2.17 tomorrow. 2.17 tomorrow, we're gonna take it out and see how it went. All right, I'll see you then, bye. Okay, we are back, it has been Exactly, looking at the clock up here, exactly 18 hours. It's now 2.22, so 18 hours and four minutes, I think, probably close enough. Okay, I'm gonna take these out of the freezer and putting the freezer, the freezers over there. Now, before we do that, I wanna read these instructions. I saw several reviews of this product saying, I can't get the cubes out, the cubes are completely frozen, the cubes are, are not clear, they've got streaks in them, all kinds of things. This appears to me to be a quality product. It was rated uh, number one by America's Test Kitchen, according to the manufacturer's uh, reports, that was probably true. The uh, quality of the, of, the, of the product seems very good. Everything is nice quality, nice crisp edges, uh, you know, everything seems to be really good quality. Um, and the instruction manual here, is is very nice it's very good quality paper nice photography uh, nicely printed and it has some tips here for how to make this work I'm gonna read it to you because I think this is probably the solution it's probably a good product and people are not reading the instructions making the cubes we did all that according to directions removing the cubes the easiest and best way to remove the ice cubes is to freeze the tray for only 18 to 22 hours. We're right at the 18 hour mark right now. At this stage, the silicone tray is frozen, that's the top tray, while the bottom is slushy, which makes removal of the cubes very easy. Number one, remove both silicone trays from the insulated box using the tabs. Two, the top tray should easily lift away from the bottom tray, leaving behind the soft, slushy ice in the bottom tray. Number three, crack the true cubes apart like a regular ice cube tray. I guess that means, you know how like a plastic ice cube tray, you, you sort of twist it and they go pop, pop, pop. I think that's what that means. If necessary, let the tray sit for a few minutes to thaw before cracking. Do not hit the bottom of the tray, nor do not hit the top tray on a counter as this may shatter the cubes. Okay, if freezing the cubes for exactly 18 to 22 hours, very precise, 
is not feasible and the silicone trays are completely frozen. Well, let's look at that if we have that problem. Uh, we should be in pretty good shape. Now you'll notice here, remember we're keeping track of the impurities in the water. I've got a total dissolved solids in the tap water of 153 parts per million ppm. And the reverse osmosis water that I'm using for a reference is at 10 parts per million. Now we did use tap water. I, I have used reverse osmosis water for things in the past. Uh, we're gonna see how this works. So the, when we get the ice cubes out, I'm gonna test the total dissolved solids of the wastewater. That's the part that's supposed to be slushy in the bottom tray. Because according to what they say, the impurities are gonna go down to the bottom tray. Let's see if it's different from the original tap water. Okay, here we go, the moment of truth. And there's my freezer, and here I come. This is so exciting, guys. All right, what's it look like? Let's see. The ice in there looks extremely clear. You see cool little uh, crystals formed around the perimeter on top here. That could be because you can see here, I had a little drip of water, and that could be that that's what caused those um, crystals to form. So let's go back here and see if we can see if we can do what they say to do. We're going to take both the top parts out from the insulated box. Okay, that worked. There it is. Here's the box. Okay. Now the bottom part here is supposed to be slushy. Yeah, it's kind of slushy. Oh, and look, I'm, water's pushing out as I squeeze it. So this is supposed to be possible to just remove. I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna move my camera. Okay, this is supposed to lift out. So you've got two parts here. This is supposed to lift out. Oh, it's lifting out. I don't wanna to pull too hard. Oh, it's lifting out, guys. It's lifting out. Here it comes. There we go. Okay, so stuff in the bottom is indeed slushy. Yeah, okay. On the top, we've got these. Okay, now there's some ice through these holes here. That might keep us from cracking these open. Let's see, I'm gonna twist it. Oh, that one's come loose. I feel like this is kind of sharp. Um, there they go. Okay, I think I'm ready to take one out. Here it goes. Not much to hold on to. And there it is, guys. Look at that baby. That is like really clear. That's kind of amazing. Look at it, see if I can hold it up so you can see through it. Look at that. That's a crystal clear piece of ice. It's got a few little bubbles in there. See the little bubbles in there? But boy, it's getting cold. Okay, not bad. Now, I wanna take these, um, I'm gonna get something to put them in. Hold on a second. Okay, now I'm gonna take one of these cubes. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna rinse this first with the reverse osmosis water, which we know is very pure. That's just to get any, uh, you know, dishwasher, soap residue, anything in there that might increase the amount of total dissolved solids. We wanna get an accurate read. So I'm gonna put this cube in here for further analysis. Oh, look at how that fits in there. This is a, this is not really a rocks glass, it's just a juice glass, but look how nicely it fills up in there. Fills up the space and you can see right through it. Oh, I'm excited. The other ones, I'm gonna put in a plastic bag here and put them in my freezer uh, for storage. separate them a little bit so they don't freeze together. I'm going to put these in my freezer. This one we're going to analyze in a second. 
Now this wastewater in here, this is the slushy stuff. If it, if it works like they say, then the total dissolved solids should be higher than they were because the impurities from the water above will have moved down through these holes into the water below. Let's test it. What do we got? Zero, put it in the water, and it says, I can't read it from there, two, 201, 202. 204, 205. The temperature might have something to do with it. It's pretty darn cold. 230, 240, 241. Wow, that is much higher than what we had. I see it stabilized at 244. 244, and what did we have before? Tap water was 153. Now it's 244 parts per million. Huh, that's kind of amazing. Look at the difference. The tap water started at 153. After we did this process, the wastewater went up to 244. That, I'm thinking that the, the uh, water in the upper chamber was actually purified and the impurities were pushed down into the lower part, 244. It could be a function of temperature. Um, I might have to check that later, but what I'm gonna do with this part I'm gonna put this one in the microwave, get it melted, and then test this for its uh, total dissolved solids. Okay, uh, I have taken this out of the microwave. This was our clear ice cube, which is now mostly liquefied. There's still a little bit of ice in there. Come back around here. If my son-in-law, Sean, were doing the camera work, it would be much better, but this is what we get. Okay, let's test this one. I'm excited about this too. Here we go. It's reading zero, so I know that it's uh, working. I'm gonna put it in the water. I'm putting the water up to it. It's going into the water. What does it say? Four. Oh my goodness. That says four parts per million. That is more pure than my reverse osmosis water. Not saying four, three, it's going between three and four parts per million. That is crazy. I didn't know you could purify water by doing that. Four parts per million. That is insane. So the clear ice, clear ice, it's between three and four. I'm going to say four, four parts per million, from 153 down to four. Wow, what, what kind of a percentage decrease is that? That's about 25, to, I can't do that in my head, but that's huge. If it went down to 15, it'd be a 10, it'd be a 90% reduction. So it's down to like 97%? That is insane. Okay, well, not only do you get clear ice, but you get really pure ice. That is like crazy, sorry. That is crazy. Not only do you get pure ice, uh, clear ice, you get super pure ice. I'm astounded. I'm really, this is the most incredible thing. I'm very surprised that it went down to water that's more pure than what goes through my reverse osmosis system that I installed under my sink. So this product, this True Cubes gets a five-star review from me. 100%, two thumbs up. Uh, I recommend it. Now it's about 40 bucks. It's uh, 39 something I got on Amazon, so it's not cheap. Each of those ice cubes is about $10 a piece at this point. As I make more, the cost per cube will go down. But I'm excited. I'm about to make uh, cocktails for a voiceover con conference that my daughter's putting on. And um, I was inspired by this whole thing because she went out to dinner with her husband, my cameraman and uh, editor, Sean Slater. My daughter, Karen, she went, went out with them to dinner at this really nice restaurant in, in, uh, in LA. And one of the drinks that she had was like in a brandy snifter with a, 
like the cocktail was completely clear, but it had one clear ice cube in it. And I was like, oh, look at that clear ice cube. That's, that's cool. That's cool. I got to figure out how to do that. Well, I think I just did. So uh, thanks for the inspiration, Karin, and the uh, Providence restaurant in LA. I'll be using these for all of my cocktails that require big ice cubes from now on. And um, if I find out anything more, I'll let you know. But uh, that was it for me. Get the True Cubes uh, Clear Ice Maker. I think they make uh, some other shapes as well. I think they do spherical ones. Uh, not sure, but I'm going to look into it because that's totally worth it. Okay, guys, thanks for coming. Uh, if you like this, if you like this video, please indicate you like it, and please subscribe to the, to my YouTube channel, The Baritone Bartender. Uh, we have uh, new cocktail demonstration, two new, new recipes coming out every week. And I usually sing, but this is a kind of a non-cocktail event, so I wasn't quite so inspired. But I am a singer, and I'll sing for you every time, except for this one. La, 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 la. Okay, I sing. Bye.